Imagine this, you've got a photo you love, maybe it's from an old phone, maybe it's a screenshot you found online, or maybe it's just something you wish had been captured in higher resolution. But when you look closely, it's blurry, pixelated, and nowhere near the quality you'd need for a presentation, a social post, or even just a beautiful print. Now, what if I told you there's a tool that claims it can take that blurry mess and turn it into something sharp, clean, and detailed, almost like it was shot on a professional camera? That's exactly what today's video is about. We're diving into a tool called Lupa AI Upscaler to see if it's really as magical as it sounds. The place where we explore the smartest ideas, apps, and AI tools that are changing the way we create. So why even bother with an AI upscaler? The answer is simple, quality matters. Whether you're a designer who needs sharp mockups, a content creator making thumbnails, or even just someone who wants to breathe new life into old family photos, the difference between a low-res and a high-res image can completely change how people see your work. And traditionally, if you didn't have the original high-quality file, you were just out of luck. Enter AI upscalers, tools that don't just stretch pixels but actually generate new detail using machine learning. Lupa positions itself as one of the leaders in this space. It's a browser-based tool, meaning you don't have to install anything complicated, and it claims to upscale images up to 16 times their original size. Now, what really sets Lupa apart are the different modes it offers. First, there's high fidelity mode, which is designed to preserve as much of the original detail as possible. Think of this as the safe option if you don't want AI making creative guesses. Then there's creative mode, which does something a bit more adventurous. It adds interpretive detail that wasn't in the original. For example, if you upscale an illustration or a piece of digital art, this mode might enhance it with smoother lines and richer textures. There's also flux mode and realistic mode, both designed for more natural looking results, especially with photographs. So let's actually put it to the test. I took a low resolution portrait photo, the kind you'd normally see look completely washed out when zoomed in. After running it through high fidelity mode, the difference was immediate. Skin textures looked more natural, the eyes were sharper, and the background noise was cleaned up without looking overly artificial. Switching to creative mode gave me a slightly more stylized version, where the AI seemed to smooth things out and give the photo almost a polished editorial feel. Depending on your use case, both results could be valuable. And it's not just photos. I also tried it with an old piece of concept art. The original was small and pixelated, but after running it through creative mode, the lines looked redrawn and the colors popped. It almost looked like the artwork had been remastered by the original artist. That's a big win for designers or anyone working with digital assets. Now, of course, no tool is flawless. So let's talk about where Lupa shines and where it struggles. On the positive side, the speed is impressive. I've used other AI upscalers before where you're waiting a full minute or more for results. With Lupa, it usually takes under 10 seconds. Another big plus is the simplicity. You don't need to fiddle with a dozen sliders or technical jargon, upload, choose a mode and you're done. And most importantly, the quality of the results is genuinely good. Faces in particular come out looking sharp and realistic, which is something a lot of other upscalers still struggle with. But here's the other side of the coin. Sometimes faces can look a little too clean, almost airbrushed. If you're working with a vintage photo and you want to keep the original texture, you might find that Lupa polishes it a bit more than you'd like. Another issue I notice is with materials in things like interior design shots, wood, fabric, and other textures can sometimes look a little inconsistent as if the AI couldn't quite decide how to render them. And then there's the practical side. While the tool itself works great, a few users online have mentioned issues with billing and support, particularly when trying to cancel subscriptions. So if you're thinking of going beyond the free trial, just make sure you're comfortable with that. So here's the big question. Is Lupa worth it? In my opinion, yes, but with context. If you're someone who regularly needs high quality visuals, whether it's for YouTube thumbnails, client projects, or even just creative experiments, then this tool can save you a ton of time and frustration.
Before we wrap up, let me throw in a quick tip. Don't just use Lupa for obvious cases like fixing blurry photos. Think bigger. You can take a logo that was saved too small and turn it into a crisp design. You can upscale textures for 3D modeling. You can even breathe new life into scanned documents or old art projects. Basically, if it's digital and it looks low res, this tool is worth experimenting with. So, to recap, Lupa AI Upscaler is fast, simple and surprisingly powerful. It won't be perfect in every situation, but when it works, it works really well. And honestly, for most people, that's all you need. If you found this breakdown helpful, do me a favor. Hit that like button because it really supports the channel. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Have you tried Lupa or any other AI upscalers? Which one do you think does the best job? Let's compare experiences down below. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to IdeaPlex for more deep dives into the tools and technologies shaping the way we create. Thanks for watching. And as always, keep creating smarter, not harder.